Welcome everyone to live coverage of the 2019 Gran Piemonte, the second installment of the Trittico Rosa, the rose-tinted triptych of Milano-Torino, Gran Piemonte and in Lombardia that ends the international cycling season in Europe. Well, recent Gran Piemontes have been won by sprinters and rulers. That won't be the case today. The first 147 kilometers through the Canadese north of Turin are choppy enough to make the race hard if the peloton pleases. Then two climbs in the province of Biella, or three depending on how you look at them, will decide the race. Next to the uh, Giro d'Italia winner, Richard Carapaz. There's the Italian champion's jersey on the back of Davide Formolo. So today it's a longer climb, it will take longer. And very interesting is the fact that there are sections where riders can get back and, and still be the winners. We're beginning to enter, um, if not the end game, the beginning of the end game. Unless Rossetti is, a, is in a great form, it's going to be very unlikely that he's going to stay away. They're bossing this, uh, aren't they? They are. There's uh, Puccio, there's uh, Castro. Average of 6.2% uh, on the climb here, but there is a section at 13%, about halfway up. Well, there are riders positioning themselves there, and I think that there is a steel spring in that peloton ready to uh, to spring. Yes, Re <laughs> ready to go. I think that there are attacks ready to go there. And now Egan Bernal, as we saw him on the Isere at the Tour de France, as we saw him the day before on the road to Valois over the Calibier. Uh, Bernal on his own, 1.6 kilometres to go. Dan Martin trying to get forward, still might be a uh, podium place for him. Could be a place for Sosa or something. He, ha he has that acceleration, but perhaps the others don't have. So uh, uh, it's, a, it's so all about the lower places on the podium now. Yeah, yeah, but it's a, just a, something like it, we don't often see these things. We normally see one rider pulling off, you know, doing the maximum what Sosa has done. We cannot, re you know, regret him and say like, oh, come on, you haven't done your job perfectly. No, he's done that, but he's got that skill. That is so unusual to watch with still having that all the gear of being able to hold that groove and still find such a great attitude. I mean, I'm so surprised, I'm really impressed. And obviously, it is such an important moment of cycling that we're watching now. These two young riders walking together, we're definitely going to be watching these same tactics in the future in way bigger races. And it could go on for years and years and years. They're so young. Scary. And there's a sensation <laughs> here that we, we got used to doing the Tour de France, and that is watching Bernard ride uh, with half an eye on the top left hand of the screen to see the distance he's leading by, because that's the way it works in the mountains when he goes off the front. Uh, the distance was what? About two and a half kilometers? No, about 1.8 kilometers, was it, when he made the move? Um, so. He's clearly decided that uh, you were talking in terms of time, not distance. But he's clearly decided that uh, you know whether it's four minutes, that type of effort is the effort that uh, he believes is going to work for him. Exactly, he knows that, and he's putting that in practice once again here in the Santuario d'Europa. And um, he's going to get what a beautiful victory for Egan Bernal. What a way as well, of, you know, coming to the end of the season. A season that has been great for him. So on the cobbles here at uh, Europa, Egan Bernal uh, approaches the finish line with a job well done. Puts a little bit of extra effort into the pedals to uh, come across the line. Faster looks over his left hand shoulder, clears his nose, and uh, behind him, uh, Souza has attacked. Uh, and Souza looks like he's going for second place. He's got uh, Buchmann uh, on his wheel, but he seems to have a gap. And uh, Egan knows he's done it, but seems to be interested in what's going to happen uh, behind him. Bernal wins uh, the stage, and while he's pointing to the symbol on his jersey, Sosa comes across for second place. They're both Ineos riders, they're both Colombians, they're both very, very young and very, very high achievers. Have your first win in Italy and your first win in the one-day race. How do you feel about it? I'm really happy, really happy. I think that this morning when I wake up, I was thinking to, to do a good race, but uh, to win is always difficult, so uh, yeah, I'm really happy because 
like you say, it's my first victory in Italy and I was uh, doing a lot of races here and it's my first race uh, and in Piemonte, uh, the region when I was living two years, so it's uh, really special to be here. Can you explain your tactic, what you asked to your teammates at the bottom of the climb? Uh, I, I was feeling really good during the race and I asked to the guys to do a good tempo and then uh, Sosa did a really, really good job. I think that uh, I win, I won, but uh, Sosa was almost uh, strongest than me. And uh, yeah, the final when uh, I, I, I saw that we were in two, uh, Sosa and me, I, I, I tried to, to go full gas until, until the finish because you never know, maybe someone can re-enter again. But I think that uh, Sosa also did a really, really, really good job and he has shown that uh, he is one of the strongest in the peloton for the climb. Very well done, thank you. So, uh, so they look for a different future. Where do they find it? Well, in international sport, in globalised sport. And there's Ivan Souza there, second in the podium. But uh, we're highlighting him because he might well have been the strongest rider in uh, the race today. And there we have Egan Bernal, the Tour de France winner, next to uh, Ivan, uh, Ivan Ramiro Souza. <laughs> Let's go, 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 let's go